So today I'm going to be talking about why I like C-tuning. Now, you don't hear me play much in C-tuning, but it's one of those tunings where when I get into it, I think I'm never going to get out of it. So how you get into C-tuning is if you're in G-tuning, you just take your D string, your low D string, the big thick one, and you just go down a whole step. And so when played open, the notes are C, G, B, D, G. And you wouldn't want that to be your primary chord, would you? Kind of muddy. And it's dissonant because you have a B and a C in the same chord. But if you but the C chord's only two fingers. Uh, and it makes this very, very, very rich C chord. Even just that's really deep. Compare that to the standard G tuning C chord, you know, uh, it would sound like this. More mellow. And that's because instead of having the first in the bass, the root in the bass, it has the third in the bass. And that doesn't make it sound as rooted. More gentle, more mellow. In C tuning, though, is the first, the root in the bass. And this gives it this root set and just gives it this good sound. reason I like it is because it's very easy to play the main chords. So in the key of C, your main chords are going to be C major, F major, G major, and C. And then you have your minor, your minors of course are going to be A minor, B minor is a little tricky, and then you have E minor, which is pretty easy. Uh, in G tuning, if you're playing, uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have uh, typically three fingers with G, three fingers with D, but you can use two to have a D seventh, which sometimes works. Uh, and then, of course, open with G. In C tuning, though, for most songs, all you have to use is two fingers on the top two strings. Uh, and there's three basic shapes. You have your, I call the one slant. So one finger's uh, on the second string first fret, the next one's on the first string, sec first string second fret, first string second fret. Uh, and so in other words, the second string's finger is one behind the first string's first string's finger. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, there's also a zero slant where they're parallel. That's kind of ugly there, but over here it's nice because this is C minor. Uh, or up here, that one's really beautiful. Uh, and then the other one is a two slant, okay? And that uh, gives it you know, that's, that's actually the interval of a fifth, I believe. So, with, but with those three, you can play pretty much most songs.
me if I do use more than two fingers. But the basic shape up here stays the same, so that's easy to keep track of. Now, there are some downsides to C-tuning. Uh, one of them is the chord shapes. So in G-tuning, the chord shapes are very simple. For your major chords, you have your F shape, which, uh, and obviously, th this isn't really a tutorial, so um, maybe if you want, I can do a tutorial on chord shapes sometime. Your F shape, your A shape, and your D shape, okay? Uh, and all these two things can just stay, and you can, what my, ba my banjo teacher calls this, riding the rails, where you can just move these two fingers up and down all you want, and then these middle fingers just switch back and forth, or it lays flat. So it's a very easy uh, way to back up any song, you know. Like that. So it's very easy. In G to in, in C tuning though, the chord shapes aren't as easy. Uh, you can use the G chord shapes, but just have use the top three strings. Uh, so that would be. But there's that low note, which will, which is contributing its tone a little bit, in one of those overtones. Uh, if you want to do full chord, it's a little harder. Uh, the chord shapes, uh, let's see, you have your F chord shape, uh, is fine if there's an F. But what if you want an F sharp? You have to do... And you can see that's a pretty hairy chord. Um, the other place you could do it is... Yeah, no, this is probably the easiest way to do that particular chord, and that's really hairy. F sharp 7th is easier, but that's not 7, that's 6. F sharp 6th is pretty easy. Yeah, because F sharp 7th would be... Yeah, so that's the F sharp 6th. So, but you can see, already we're in trouble. Um, the other one, okay, your, your D shape is probably the easiest because you just have to do you just have to bar and do two so that's probably your easiest uh the other one which there's two ways to do the your a shape uh you can do it like this uh so that fifth string's making it a seventh so if you mute that there's your a the way i like to do it though is i like to put one back here like that. So that's really easy if you're in like the key of D. pretty easy one to do and probably the easiest of them all are those two that D and the A shape obviously to remedy that you can use a capo but what if you want to do a song where they throw extras in like if you're in old time music and let's just say you're in the key of we'll make it easier in the key of C most of the time they're going to be in D A or G but you're in the key of C okay a simple song is going to have a C and F and a G but sometimes, for color, they might throw a D in. You see that they threw a D in.
different one, you know, they might throw all sorts of chords at you. Uh, and I love songs with tons of chords. But in C tuning, it's a little harder to do that. On the pro side, though, it's really easy to switch between C minor and C major in C tuning. In G tuning, it's a little more complex because your G minor chords up here, uh, you can cheat and use two fingers here for G minor. If I'm playing a song, I will do that and just keep one up here. this song it's a little bit trickier uh not the end of the world of course but playing a solo in a c minor and c tuning really beautiful because your three chords you have your c minor which is just uh want a zero slant up at the top your f minor i do do a i do bar three of the strings if you didn't it would kind of it would it would have the g mixed in which would be kind of weird but, you know, that could actually work. Now, of course, you have three or four typical minors. There's about five that are commonly used in music in general that I'm aware of. Um, and then obviously you have like blues minor. But in terms of just regular scales, you have uh, Aeolian minor, which is what people typically say when they, you know, it's in the key of such and such minor. They're talking about Aeolian, typically. Uh, and in C, Aeolian minor, your chords are going to be C, probably a B flat, maybe an A flat? Let's see, would there be an A flat? Yeah. technically in a major key because it resolves to a major but for a while that kind of it had that uh, aeolian minor sound i actually that was just me playing it on the fly so there's probably a few chords that are off um but anyway so th there's aeolian minor and the chords are very easy in the key of c minor you just have your c minor chord your b flat chord and you don't you, you have your b flat your a flat a flat, C minor, C minor, and, you, and if you're just doing the top two, that just looks like zero slant, zero slant, one slant, zero slant, zero slant, two slant, you know, so... You know, and so that, you can play that quickly, uh, and it sounds really good. Uh, the other one, and this is one of my personal favorites, Dorian mode. Okay, that's also very commonly used in folk music. Uh, and that one, your chords are typically, it, it's, going, it's going to throw in, so, so in Dorian mode, C Dorian, your chords would be a C, B flat major, and then you throw an F major in.
Williams songs, and it gives it that sort of wild sound that I really love. Mm, there's also, and I, I don't really know the particulars of this, so you'll have to do your own research, but there's Phrygian mode, uh, and that one, uh, that one, if you're in C minor, that would have the same chords as the as A flat major would, but C, uh, C, C Phrygian minor would have the same chords that A flat Ionian major would, uh, except it would resolve to a C minor. I, I, don't, I don't use that one too much. It kind of has maybe a Spanish sound to it. Uh, and then, then, though, my personal favorite minor uh, is harmonic minor. Uh, that often has a sort of a Middle Eastern sound. And the chords for that are C minor, G major, F minor, C minor. Eastern music, where you'll probably hear that mode, is you. If you're lucky, you'll hear it at Christmas time, actually. <laughs> the easiest uh, scale to play in C tuning, and it just sounds good. Uh, so C tuning, you know, you can switch back and forth between the major and minor. Another reason I love C tuning uh, is it has a history. I'm not sure if it has a longer history than G tuning, but for a long time before Earl Scruggs came around, C tuning was the common tuning. I have a PDF of a banjo instruction book from must be 1910 or turn of last century. Uh, and what tuning do they tell you to tune to? C tuning. Uh, big name banjo players like uh, Fred Von Epps and Vess Osman uh, used that tuning. Uh, they were they were very famous before uh, Scruggs and Keith and the next generation or a couple generations down came along and came up with bluegrass style. They had a style called classic style where they played a lot of rags 
and uh, 18 and 1900 pop music. And anyway, so it has a lot of history. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to some uh, of Fred Van Eth's playing in the description box. Uh, on archive.org, we have records of it. I really wish we had videos of it. I'd have loved to see that. Um, but we have recordings of that. It has a long history. People have arranged all sorts of crazy pieces for banjo back then in C tuning. I think there were a few other tunings floating around too, but that was the major, the, the major one. <laughs> Christmas carols, because uh, Christmas time's going to be here before you know it. Uh, but it takes very well to Christmas carols as well. I think is that I think the root of it is that it has the low note at the, the the lowest note is the root of the scale. That just grounds it and gives it this richness of tone that you don't get with G tuning. It's beautiful too, but you just get much more richness than C tuning. So I think that's why I like it. There's also a double C tuning uh, I've tuned into before because I have one song in it. Uh, I haven't played around much with that, haven't learned the shapes of the chords in that tuning. Uh, it also has a very beautiful sound. Uh, uh, another very common one is D tuning, uh, but see. And, and this is the this is the third thing I like about C tuning, uh, or maybe fourth. I lost count now. Uh, it, is you only have to tune one string to get from there from G tuning where I play most of my stuff in. Uh, so all I have to do is just tune the bottom string down, which is easier than tuning up. Like with G modal tuning, beautiful sound, but you have to tune that second string up. And if it's an old string, uh, you'll you could risk breaking it. Uh, it's always, I'm always uncomfortable tuning up, honestly, beyond where I'm usually at, because uh, too far you can break a string. But all you have to do is tune the, the thick string down, the fourth string. And there you are. See, detuning, you have to tune these two, the two middle ones, the second and third, you have to tune them down, and uh, the fifth string. So that's a little bit uh, more difficult. I, there's other beautiful tunings. I recently heard something with a tuning that has like B flat in it. I, it might be a B flat tuning, I don't remember, but it was. It just gave it a very rich tone. Uh, but for, for people like me, C tuning works the best. With C tuning, you can tune in there uh, and get back pretty quickly. Interestingly, I'm too lazy to do that, so I, I get into C tuning and I hear how beautiful it is, and I think, wow, that's so beautiful, I'm never getting out of it. And then, later on, I do the incredible effort of tuning this string up a little bit, and then I'm in G tuning, and I'm in G tuning, I think, wow, this tuning is so easy to switch back and forth between chords and all sorts of keys, and never getting out of it. So, that's why a lot of, most of my things are in G tuning. Uh, there, pro there might be a lot of things in C tuning, though most of the songs I play are in G tuning. I know a few in C tuning, 
Uh, but pretty much anything you play sounds good. That's not strictly true. You know, if you work hard, you can find something ugly. Uh, like, like, you know, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, now I think we're finding something ugly. Let's see. Okay, maybe, arguably, that's a little ugly. It sounds a little modern. I mean, if you work hard, you can find something ugly. But overall, it's just, it's a beautiful tuning. Uh, very simple, you just have to remember those those shapes. another video about why I like G tuning. Uh, feel free to ask questions, leave comments. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.